So you've decided that enough is enough. You need your space to flow better and knocking down that internal wall is an absolute must. While it's hard to visualize, you know that it's going to open up your space, let the light in and offer you so much more room to fit a bigger kitchen or a dining area or a living area that you can really relax in. But knocking down an internal wall shouldn't be taken lightly. It's the moment when your project becomes a more costly, more complicated and pretty messy operation and there can be some serious risks involved that you need to mitigate. So before you call the team in to start that demolition, you have some very important preparation to do to make sure that this isn't the biggest mistake of your life. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the six questions that you need to answer before knocking down that internal wall. So let's get into it. Now, I know how nerve wracking knocking down a wall and all renovation decisions can be. Back in 2016, we were just about to sign our entire life savings over to a kitchen extension. Before, a moment of pure inspiration hit us and we saved 80,000 pounds on a new layout idea. Stick around until the end of this video and I'll tell you more about that. When you're considering knocking down an internal wall, the very, very first question to ask is, is my wall load bearing? Now, really, you should always ask an experienced contractor, structural engineer or architect to clarify the answer to this question when they come to inspect your home. But there are some simple investigations that you can actually do yourself. I always start by checking if there's a wall in the same place directly above the wall in question, so upstairs. And this can be a really good indicator as to whether the wall that you want to remove is actually supporting any weight above or the roof and structure of the property. And another tip is to give the wall you want to remove a quick tap and if it sounds hollow there's a good chance that it's a partition wall which is easier to remove provided there's no wiring or plumbing within it and if it sounds solid with no hollow sound it's quite probably load bearing but seriously err on the side of caution here when you're performing your own checks because sometimes a load bearing wall can actually sound hollow when you tap it because the plaster is blown. If you've got any doubts at all, then figuring out your answer to this next question could put your mind at rest. Do I need an architect or structural engineer to knock down a wall? Getting a professional in is ideal for peace of mind and if you're working on a listed building or your home's in a conservation area, then consult an architect who's well versed in working with listed properties. But if yours isn't a listed building and you're not in a conservation area, then it's likely you may only need a structural engineer to calculate the RSJ measurements so that it'll be sufficient to hold the weight above the load bearing wall that you're knocking down. Knowing whether you should bring an architect in for your whole project can be such a tough one to figure out, but don't worry we've got you covered. I've popped a link below this video to a handy flowchart that's going to help you work out if an architect is needed on your project or not. So head over there to find answers specific to your project. Will you be converting your loft? Without question, if you're knocking down a load bearing wall, then you will require the services of a structural engineer, whether you're hiring an architect or not. They are the only people qualified to design and calculate the size and construction of the RSJ or any columns that are needed to support the weight of whatever's above the wall once it's been removed. And their drawings will also be really essential for building regs approval. Now you might be wondering why on earth I'm asking you about lofts? Well, if your property has enough roof height and space to eventually convert, that's a lot of extra weight that's being added to the house and potentially extra weight on that RSJ that you're installing. So, future proof. Make sure that your structural engineer factors in possible loft conversion weights allowance to their calculations. And then you and all future owners are covered if they do need to add more, more space or footprint to the property in years to come. Is a knock through going to create layout problems? Okay, hear me out on this one, because if you're gearing up to knock down a wall, you've got to make sure that you've considered how your furniture or fittings will be laid out too. Now I know I'm stating the obvious here, but knocking down a wall will leave you without a wall. And that means one less wall to position a run of kitchen cabinets, which would otherwise give you loads of storage or a bigger kitchen. And that's one less wall that can also reduce your options on where you'll place radiators if you're not opting for underfloor heating. So always make sure that alongside your structural plans, you're considering closely what your interior design and heating plans are doing too. That way you're gonna prevent loads of design headaches or regrets later. 
Another question is, should you expose the beam itself? If that wall you're knocking down requires a beam replacement, the question then is whether or not to expose that new steel beam with a fire rated design solution. This can add a lot of character to your room, but for some spaces it can actually feel quite overpowering. There are loads of different ways that you can improve the look of the beam and make it a feature. So for example, we see a lot of RSJ caps in period properties, which disguise the beam and make it look like an original wooden beam. The safe option is then also boxing off the beam with fireproofing around it and painting it the same color as your walls or ceilings. And others have made a feature of their beams by leaving it exposed and coating it in a fire rated paint. The options are actually endless. Another thing to mention here is that for higher end designs where you want your RSJs completely disguised with no visible drop in the ceiling, it's well worth a conversation with your structural engineer and or your architect to discuss whether the RSJ installation can happen right above your ceiling and below the floor above. Occasionally, homeowners drop their entire ceiling to sit in line with the RSJ, allowing a really flush look. And I think if you're building a property or if you've got really good ceiling height and you're needing to rebuild the ceilings anyway, this is well worth considering. I briefly mentioned earlier, but just to reiterate, steel beams must be protected against fire. So make sure however you're designing it or disguising it, you're keeping in line with those building regulations. Now here's a common question. Do you need a planning permit or building approval? This one's pretty straightforward to answer, unless you're renovating a listed building or you're in a conservation area, internal alterations shouldn't require any planning permissions for the work as of the date we're recording this video, which is happy days. But building regulations are a different story if you're knocking down a load bearing wall. You will need to submit a building control application with drawings by your structural engineer and details of the work that you're doing for approval. Your local council will also arrange a building inspection at various points during the construction to inspect the work, and make sure it's safely done, and you'll obtain a certificate of approval upon completion. The type of wall that you take down will determine whether building regulations apply to you. So for example, if you're taking down a wall around some stairs, then this might have an impact on safety and it will need to be agreed with your local authority. If you're in any doubt, the best resource for this type of issue is the planning portal. They supply lots of guidance on common projects um, to see whether you need planning permission or not. So I'll leave a link in the description box for you. Now, we've covered a lot of questions, but let's get into the biggest one that we get asked at FIFA McGee, which is how much does it cost? When it comes down to calculating the cost of your project, it really depends on the size and the number of walls you're removing, as well as the cost of steel, it fluctuates. So the longer the wall that you're knocking down, the higher the price for all that steel and the labour. And if it's a stud wall or a petition wall, you'll be paying a lot less because no steel will be required. So yes, load bearing walls are much more expensive to take down, especially as you need to factor in building control application costs and inspection costs, as well as structural surveyor costs. You'll also need to factor in whether things like radiators and electrics will need to be moved or replaced, as this will also increase your price. And you might need to consider a visit from a party wall surveyor if the work being done will affect your neighbour's property. But honestly, don't let the logistics put you off in the slightest because we're here to help you simplify the process and really make sure that you're doing things safely, affordably and with no regrets. Cost-wise, our students in the Renner Club community are paying between four and five thousand pounds to remove a standard load-bearing wall, which typically includes costs for a structure engineer, building control fees, props, demolition and the RSJ itself, plus any labour and rubble disposal. It can seem overwhelming and believe me, we've been there and that's precisely why we've developed our home renovation online course and community and it's really to alleviate any stress of those big decisions and prevent any momentous mistakes, we don't want any of that. Part of the reason we developed the course was because it was exactly the sort of thing we needed when we were doing our very first renovation. And we also have a free renovation guide if you're keen to learn about what we do and get some tips on how to prevent your cost spiraling and find the right trades. I'll leave links in the description box for you. 
Before we finish, I promised you that I would tell you more about the biggest mistake that almost cost us £80,000. When we moved in here, the rooms hadn't been touched since the 60s, and while the kitchen units were in slightly better condition, it just needed a complete overhaul. So we spoke to our architect who drew up plans for us, and suddenly we were ready to blow 80k on a brand new kitchen extension. But then we sat and asked ourselves, was spending all that money really going to make us any happier? Pretty quickly we started to think very differently about how we could use our home and knowing we had a whole house to renovate, it seemed pretty crazy to blow £80,000 on just one area when we could cover the whole house with that fund. So we scrapped that plan, literally we, we ripped up the architect drawings that we paid three and a half grand for and scaled back our designs completely. We knocked down the dividing wall between the old kitchen and the dining room and did a much more modest design that gave us much better use of space and it was a fraction of the cost. The big question is do we regret it and there are a few things that we'd have done differently now but that's a story for another video. I actually wrote a blog post about this um, answering five years on what our regrets are so I'll link that below this video too. But honestly what a difference knocking down a wall has made to this space and it will do the exact same for you. I'd love to know what your upcoming plans are so let's chat in the comments below and tell me more about your project. Thank you so much for watching, Neil and I really appreciate the support that you've been showing us on this channel and as always please do like and subscribe, there's so many more renovation videos to come. We're rooting for you in your renovation. Alright, take care, bye!